for ancient tribes that lived along the Nile River thousands of years ago. The River Nile was an unpredictable ally. Too little rain and people starved to death. Too much rain and the river overflowed its banks and destroyed entire villages. No tribe could solve this problem by itself because each tribe commanded only a small section of the river. Only a common effort to build huge dams and dig hundreds of kilometers of canals could hope to restrain and harness the mighty river. Today, the world has global problems. Climate change, inequality, pandemics, ethnic and religious conflicts that require global solutions. And therefore, we need more globalization and multilateral organizations such as the UN, World Bank, Asian Development Bank, so on and so forth. But the question is how to get into such organizations. So let's start with the UN first. There are two very popular ways to get a paid position in the UN. The first and the most preferred way is to apply via the United Nations Young Professional Program. The YPP examination is held once a year in different subject areas depending on the needs of the UN. The application period typically opens in June each year and those interested can apply via Inspira link in comments. But the problem with the United Nations Young Professionals Program is that your eligibility to participate in this exam depends upon your nationality. So if your country already has an excellent representation in the United Nations, then you might not be eligible to write the exam. Every year, the United Nations changes the list, but only those countries that are unrepresented or underrepresented in the United Nations are invited to take part in the Young Professionals Program. But there is a solution to this. You can apply for contractual roles within the United Nations. You can apply as a consultant or as a specialist. During my time in the United Nations, I got the opportunity to work with some exceptional high-ranking United Nations officials who were opted in the UN system via this track. And this track is not only within the UN system, but is also prevalent in the World Bank or the Asian Development Bank of various funds and programs within the United Nations family. This includes the UNDP, UNEP, UN Population Fund, UN Habitat, UNICEF, World Food Program, you name it. But the next question is, how can you get hired for those contractual positions? To be brutally honest, it is not very difficult. You need to focus on two extremely important concepts. Number one is the concept of feeder schools. And this point is extremely important for those who are currently undergrads and are mindlessly investing in MBA degrees. If you were to take a walk today inside the United Nations headquarters in Manhattan, a World Economic Forum in Madison Ave, a World Bank for that matter, you would realize that MBAs are in a minority. Almost everyone in such organizations has an excellent policy degree from one of the three schools, Graduate School of Law and Diplomacy, Harvard Kennedy, or Columbia, because these are some brilliant feeder schools for international organizations. In fact, during my time in New York and DC, I came across a term called the Fletcher Mafia, consisting of brilliant Fletcher alums placed in high-ranking positions within multiple international organizations. A similar network also exists for the alums of Global Governance Initiative, where many members of the Global Governance Initiative family are looking out for each other and proactively helping each other out to get into firms such as McKinsey, BCG, United Nations or World Bank. The second concept is the concept of role specific skill sets. Even if you get into a feeder school, you will first have to get your CV shortlisted. And thereafter, 
you will be required to clear multiple rounds of interviews and for that you will need to master certain interview skill sets around the basics of negotiations market failures hands off matrix lettles law impact investing so on and so forth by leveraging exceptional communications frameworks in psychology and here global governance initiatives policy scholars program will come to rescue and somehow if you're able to get shortlisted for the policy scholars program by global governance initiative my advice would be to focus on three things during your time at global governance initiative number 1 leverage the gji network and gji partnerships to the best of your abilities global governance initiative has already partnered with the fletcher school of law and diplomacy for admissions and scholarships for their scholars and fellows and from time to time they also collaborate with a few employment partners number 2 is to network extensively during your time at global governance initiative this could be done via networking nights or during your master classes and via the buddy system on the schrodinger and weekly platform exclusively designed for the scholars and fellows community but most importantly you should leverage the exceptional master classes to build industry connections with speakers and your cohort members who are already leaders in such organizations past speakers have headed united nations offices and have held senior leadership positions in various governments and consulting organizations such as mckinsey boston consulting group so on and so forth to be brutally honest getting into the united nations or world bank or bcg is not very difficult if you are willing to work hard to the best of your abilities for a few months in addition to hard work you should also have the patience and calmness because at the end of the day it does not matter how well you are prepared as long as you are calm relaxed and composed and have a great support system you will conquer the world There's a lot to ponder not just in careers but also in philosophy economics international relations and businesses so subscribe to this channel and press on the bell icon so that you are notified whenever the next video is uploaded good luck take care and stay safe